Hi, I'm Dr. Virginia LeBlanc, also known as Doc V, the Pivot Maestro. Welcome to the Define Your Path podcast for those seeking to define their own path into purposed entrepreneurship. This is a show about transforming perspectives as well as inspiring and motivating you to think without a box by exposing you to global thought leaders as my guests today and change agents and legacy builders across industries on how they successfully define their path in life and business to profitability and sustainable wins. At Defining Paths, we operate in truth, transparency, and love to help you navigate the waters of your life and put you back in business. And Define Your Path podcast is no different. It all starts in the mind. Will you be the captain or the crew? Today's spotlight is with Karen Seltz. I'm so excited for you all to hear from Karen. Karen, also known as the uncensored self-love coach, is a spiritual channel healer, author, speaker, and coach who supports women to fully embrace all the parts of themselves to develop the courage and confidence necessary to create meaningful, vibrant lives they're passionate about, not just simply living, but that they're passionate about. Karen has a master's of education in counseling, is a certified life coach, a licensed brain gym consultant, speaker, and author with more than 25 years of combined experience. As a former comedian, which I love, (laughs) Karen is able to share her journey from depression, addiction, and self-hatred to self-compassion, self-acceptance, and self-love vulnerably and with a touch of humor on countless stages, podcasts, and her very own weekly live TV show, Irresistible You, Ignite Your Passion and Purpose. Using the wisdom that she discovered on her own journey, Karen now inspires and coaches others on how to love themselves unconditionally, discover their spiritual gifts and purpose, and to create extraordinary lives of impact that they previously thought were beyond their reach. Karen, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you so much, Doc V. I am awesome, and I'm really excited to be here with you and share with all your viewers and listeners. One of, one of the things that I love is sharing my the depths of the darkness so that other people can say, wow, I'm not as bad as she is <laughs> or was. <laughs> Well, I tell you what, we look forward to hearing your story. That is just perfect. As I said, we're true transparency and love. (laughs) We're looking forward to hearing your story, how you faced your fears to love the skin you're in and pivot into pursuing your passion and soul purpose. You know, and in this podcast, we love to keep it simple. So there are only two questions that I have for you. And then we're going to flow between those two questions. First question is, how have you defined your path? And how do you help others define theirs? Beautiful. Spotlight is yours. <laughs> yeah. So my path keeps being defined every single day. And I think those, when I thought I've had it figured out, I've been wrong. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> so I love to be flexible with that and to embrace the fact that I am a work in progress. Yes. So where I started, well, a long time ago, I used to be in sales and I had a daughter that was born with, she was medically complex. We'll go with that. By the time she was one, she had 20 different medical specialists. Mm. And my ex-husband, in order to deal with that, because it was really difficult, uh, he turned to alcohol. Mm. And in order for me to deal with it, I turned to having sex with strangers. Mm. So interesting, you know, like attracts like, we're both addicts, numbing the pain. Right. And it got really, really ugly to the point where, you know, I, one night I came home from, after we were separated, I came home from acting out with a stranger, acting out like means having sex with a stranger. Mm -hmm. And I caught a glimpse of myself in the bathroom mirror. Mm -hmm. And I just like stopped dead in my tracks. And I will always remember this moment. And I just caught a glimpse of this emptiness behind my eyes. And I started screaming at myself, like, what are you doing to yourself? Like, who are you? I don't even recognize you. You were not meant for this. And at that moment, I had completely rejected God and all things spiritual. Mm -hmm. I dropped 
to my knees and I prayed for the first time in many, many years. And I said, help me, I can't do this anymore. And I heard a voice and it said, get up, get up. You were meant for more. And that was the very last time that I acted out. And that was almost seven years ago. And I made a promise to myself that no matter what, I would face whatever came to me. I wouldn't numb it and medicate it with things outside of me anymore. And especially not sex with strangers, sex that didn't mean anything. And I haven't. And it's been a bumpy road. It's been really bumpy. And so I take, you know, everything that I've been through and I use it because how it starts is when we're little, we get these messages mm. like it's yes. not okay for you to be selfish. So we, we take that piece out of ourselves like, okay, selfishness, you go in the closet. <laughs> it's not okay to be a bitch when we get older. So we take that piece and we, we pull it out. And by the time we reach adulthood, if you look down, we're full of holes. Right. Ooh. And yeah. And so we're constantly reaching outside of ourselves and trying to fill those holes. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, self-accept, or not self-acceptance, um, people-pleasing. Like if this person accepts me, oh, that fills the hole. Somebody saying I'm smart, oh, that fills the hole. <laughs> Somebody agreeing with me that I'm right, ooh, that fills a big hole. <laughs> mm, yes. I love to be right. But the problem is when we're looking out here, the, those holes, I mean, it's falling right through. So because we've rejected huge pieces of ourselves. Yes. So what I've learned is to bring those pieces back and to love them. Okay, selfishness, come on, I got you. It's okay <laughs> to be selfish. You're just as lovable when you're selfish. Yes, you are. Okay, my little bitch, come on in. Come on in, make it home. <laughs> And then not only that, but like welcoming all those pieces back yes. and then em embracing them, like finding the gifts, like when's it okay to be a bitch? Well, mm -hmm. I tell you when my daughter had 20 different medical specialists and her kidney specialist was saying, oh, expect for her to have a kidney transplant by the time she's one. I'm like, hell no, that is not happening on my watch. Hell no. So I was a bitch and mm -hmm. I changed doctors and I looked outside of conventional medicine mm -hmm. and she's now 14 and has not had a kidney oh. transplant <laughs> beautiful mm. yeah so just bringing all those pieces back not only like saying yeah you're okay you can hang out with me but just loving them because they're the same as any other piece and not only that like for me let's take selfishness for an example selfishness is one side of a coin the opposite for me is generosity so until I fully embrace my selfishness, mm -hmm. I cannot fully be generous. Because mm -hmm. really, look, this is an easy one to have an, as an example. How can you be generous when you're giving everything away? You don't leave anything for yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not picking and choosing where to put your energy. You're saying yes to everything because you're so afraid of being selfish. Mm. So it makes complete sense. It's like, we're all holistic. We all have it every does. single characteristic within us. Absolutely. And you're doing exactly what, you know, I, I say all the time, embrace your fears and they, and make them your ally. You know, they'll become your ally. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. I, just, I, I don't want to stop you, Karen, but there's so much you've already said that I could pick up on. So please feel free to go because the spotlight is yours. <laughs> Oh no, ask away. Like what? Girl, so let's just back all the way up. <laughs> Rewind. <laughs> Are you gonna make the noise? <laughs> <laughs> so so many women, so many men deal with the same thing you dealt with. Addiction. It doesn't matter what kind of addiction, be it, you know, substance abuse, you know, alcohol addiction, sex addiction. But you found it, you know, that moment happened, you know, that happens for so many people who deal with whatever type of addiction, you know, where you have to face yourself, you have to look yourself in the mirror intentionally or unintentionally and decide whether or not you're going to pivot or you're going to continue. Talk about that a little bit more. I mean, that, I mean, it takes a lot to, to just stop like that. You know, I had a similar experience when, 
I was younger, you know, and, and I was following a path of, uh, of alcohol addiction on, on, you know, one side of my family. And, you know, literally the taste was taken out of my mouth, you know, when I fell to my knees and called out for help. Yeah, it yeah. takes, uh, you know, we all have a different bottom, you know, like they say in 12 step, like you have to hit a bottom. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know if that was mine, but it seemed to work. Mm -hmm. And for me, it was knowing I didn't know how, and I wasn't concerned with how I just knew my intention was so strong that I would never, ever degrade myself mm -hmm. or act out sexually or act out of integrity. Mm -hmm. in that way again ever I just knew and I don't know what it takes for other people but from that moment every decision I made mm -hmm. was toward this vision of being healthy and being in mm -hmm. healthy relationships where I wasn't trying to get something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I love your example about just how everything is taken out of us and it's put on that shelf you know, that whole social cultural conditioning that, you know, as we're growing up and then, you know, and having that huge hole grow, I had a whole visualization going on here, you know, and how it's up and then we, we start putting on masks to, to hide, hide those hurts, those hangups, those habits or what have you, but then embracing it, that's the key and putting it back in and, and understanding that we are perfectly perfect in our imperfection. Absolutely. And the masks, that was a, that's a big part of my journey. Mm -hmm. I used to go to these meetings and they were based on this book called Real Love. And it was helping us to learn how to be unconditionally loving and to accept unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And there were these meetings, they were kind of like 12 step meetings, but, but not. <laughs> and the purpose was to learn to tell the truth about yourself. Mm -hmm. And for everybody else who didn't have the floor, the purpose was for them to get rid of their judgment and to just love and accept people exactly as they mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to, it was probably my second one. And I told like some surface level truth that didn't make me look too bad. Mm -hmm. And the host said, okay, great. Now tell us what you're really afraid to tell us. <laughs> and I'm like, right. oh, shit. shit. <laughs> no, she didn't. So... <laughs> So I remember like, okay, like it was like in a split second, but it seemed like it took forever in my head Right. thinking, okay, I don't really know these people. I looked like there's the door. I can make it out. I can <laughs> run for it if they start attacking me because I grew right. up a physically abusive household. So mm. I was, was expecting people to physically attack me <laughs> even as an adult. Um, so I remember I lowered my eyes to the floor and it was a group of women who were really scary to me at that time because I was sleeping with their husbands mm. <laughs> so I'm like of course they knew that I mean I did they didn't but so I looked at the floor and I'm like I have sex with married men and I just waited and I kept looking at the floor and I waited and waited you know those feelings like daggers like stabbing you in the yeah. back I waited for those and I didn't feel any so finally I'm like I look up I look around and all I saw was compassion on the faces of these women. I'm like, where am I? Like, what planet am I on? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is going on? I did. I never imagined that as a possible scenario. You know, when you grow up being right. defensive and protecting yourself, I never imagined I could tell the truth and be accepted. Mm -hmm. And then what happened after that was nothing short of miraculous. One after the other, they started telling like deep truths, like, oh my gosh, I had an affair 12 years ago with my best friend's husband and I've never told a soul and it's been eating me alive. Wow. Wow. And other ones like I stole from my church and it's been killing me. You know, it's just like, mm -hmm. because I had the courage to tell a really hard truth, because back then I didn't know the truth. Yeah. I mean, if it looked me in the face, I'd be like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but it, it, it opened it up for all these other women to be seen and loved and accepted just as they were. Wow, A powerful story, powerful testimony. And, and what I want to reiterate, reiterate about the show, this is real life. You know, this, this was a real life experience. You actually went through this, but yet you have managed to find self-love, pull yourself out of that 
And now you are, you're thriving. You've started your own business. You know, you're an entrepreneur. Um, and I would say you are following your, your sole purpose. Um, tell us more about that. Yeah. So, so the big part of it, I studied coaching. I went to school and studied coaching, but I was still acting out sexually. And I'm like, I can't possibly coach anybody. I would be the biggest hypocrite in the world. So it wasn't until after I had that moment where I felt like, okay, now I can do this because I'm walking the walk. And part of my journey is, is really being completely transparent. Mm -hmm. So I talk on podcasts about my sex addiction. I talk about what brought me to this place and nobody has anything on me. There's, it's mm -hmm. not like someone's going to do an investigation and find out something else. I'm like, I tell it all. <laughs> so, right. so I'm free. Mm -hmm. I am free. And I teach other women how to get that level of freedom because when you can be transparent, you're never worried. Like, yeah, sure. My husband loves me, but what if he found out this? Would he leave? Sure. My friends accept me, but are they talking behind my back? Mm -hmm. it, you don't have that anymore. So you're just, you're clear. And then you can reach your creative potential. You can yeah. access your spiritual gifts. You can become a spiritual channel because we all have that ability. Yes. It's just, we're filling it with so much worry and crap. Like what if people find out this and, oh, do, which mask do I have to wear today? If mm -hmm. you know, be accepted here it, without mm -hmm. that, imagine who you'd be. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You are dropping nuggets everywhere. I love the fact also, because a lot of people don't realize this when they're considering, you know, pursuing the entrepreneurial path. It's like, oh, well, I don't even know how to begin or how do I start? Or, you know, I don't know what I would do. Who would I serve? But this is something that I'm hearing in your story. And it's true of mine. Also, my pain point became my client mission. So from pain, you know, we find passion and the passion leads to the sole purpose that's constantly trying to call us and get out. We're just not listening because, you know, it's back there and we have too much going on in life, you know, to dealing with, you know, our hurts, hangups and habits that we just can't find it or we never find our way to it. Yeah. So what I found is when we are worried about the how, that creates analysis paralysis. And quite frankly, it's none of our business. If we have a relationship at all with a higher power, we get to surrender it. We get to say, this is what I feel led to. This is what I feel yeah. called to do, mm -hmm. how I feel called to serve. You take care of the how. I don't know. It's none of my business. Mm -hmm. I have a magic equation. Can I swear on this show? <laughs> Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I didn't check with my producer, but I think so. I came up with this during the session. I, my, one of my clients is really analytical mm -hmm. and she was like, okay, but how this and how that I said, write this down. This is a magic equation. How equals mind fuck because mm. you get stuck and you start spinning when you're worried about the how yeah. when your intention is clear and you're like, this is the result I want. Mm -hmm. What I have clients do is go back to the beginning. Okay. So what results do you want to create? Now mm -hmm. go back to the beginning. Who do you get to be? What characteristics do you get to yes. embody to create that result? And from there, one step at a time, mm -hmm. you do get to take committed action, but one step at a time, you don't need the whole plan. Right. Like what, for me, it's what would you have me do now? Right. Okay, do the thing. Okay, now what would you have me do? And I'm talking with God, spirit, universe, whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. all the time. And it's easy then. I'm not in analysis paralysis. I'm not yes. worried. <laughs> so true. You know, and unfortunately, so many of us who have gone through extensive education, you know, the educational process system, that analysis paralysis thing is real, you know, and we're worried about tomorrow when we're living in today. You know, it's okay to have some type of thought toward you know, your future or, or, or vision or what have you, but yeah, just acting, acting in the moment. That's huge, you know, and, and being led by, by feeling, you know, and not getting caught in the mind. I love that you brought that out and, and that you spoke <laughs> truth in that. And I love that equation. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to start getting shirts and start selling. <laughs> A magic equation. <laughs> well, yes. I do go by uncensored, you know, ah, what do you yeah. expect? You know, it's 
But it's true. It's real talk. It's, so we're going to have to have you on my candid conversations with Doc V show also. <laughs> TV show. It's real talk, you know, and this is what we need more about because it helps to combat those fears that people face every day. So, you know, talk about um, as we just kind of draw to a close, girl, I could just talk to you all day. Um, you know, I want to talk about what does it look like when people um when they come to you, well, you just spoke a little bit about that, but um, if they're like, okay, well, I don't know if, if I'm really ready to deal with this um, right now, or, you know, this, this, that, or the other is stopping me. What is the, what is the advice or the guidance that you would give them? What would you say? Yeah, the, the biggest thing is I'll ask questions like, you know, if they say they're not, they don't know if they're ready. I'll ask something like, well, how long have you wanted this? And they'll be like, then they get in touch with what it's costing them. Because and that's the next question. Mm-hmm. What is it costing you not doing it now? Right. Because if you don't do it now, will another 20 years go by? Mm-hmm. I'm not exactly. willing to, I'm willing to stand for you. I'm willing to get uncomfortable mm-hmm. in order for you to step in. Are you willing? Because I can't be more willing than a client. Like they get to do their own work. Mm-hmm. I will stand for somebody. I will call them forward and I will call them on their BS stories Mm -hmm. because it's all stories based on the past, based on what they think is going to happen, which will happen because they're creating it. Right. 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 (laughs) So, so for me, it's, it's just getting clear on what questions and I allow those to come in. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times I'll get people, what does it cost you so far? Not stepping into this. And then the other, the big one, like I mentioned first, is how long have you wanted this? Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I had this <laughs> note card. It was like a little note card in my jewelry drawer that I never used. And I was cleaning it out one day and it said, I am an inspirational public speaker. And that card had been there for like 20 years. Mm-hmm. That's how much public speaking I had done up until that point. Probably zero. Goose egg. <laughs> yep. It was in a drawer. Uh-huh. So if someone asked me, well, how long have you wanted them? I'm like, well, forever, but I don't know what to talk about. But, you mm-hmm. know, like I had all the excuses, all the stories. So it was painful to find that card and to see that dream all dusty. Right. And everybody has them. Everybody has these dreams that they're afraid that they're not enough. Well, here's what I have to say. If you weren't enough, you would never have that dream. True. You would never have that. It wouldn't have been given to you if you don't have everything you need to accomplish it. It wouldn't have come into your consciousness. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do about it? Who do you get to be? For me, a big part was courageous. I was so afraid to look stupid. That was one of my big ones Mm -hmm. that I would just stop. I'm like, well, I'm not perfect yet. I need more education. I need to do this program and this program. And I collected degrees, certifications, programs, (laughs) and I did nothing for a zillion years. And I got tired of it. I'm like, okay, I get to be imperfect. Mm-hmm. And now I put stuff out there all the time. First take, okay, or live, right? I just do it. If they yeah. want a perfect coach, that's not me. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I'm not it. Recovering perfectionist right here. <laughs> I got you. I hear you. Yeah, recovering yeah. perfectionist. So what I'm hearing in the in just the whole of the story also. It's about being able to forgive yourself. Start that, that, that internal, that personal forgiveness process so that you can find self-love and then be able to walk in your purpose, you know, and love others. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And, you know, in my work, I've embraced releasing my victim and boy, does she rear her ugly head all the time. You know, yes. wanting to blame somebody else because, mm-hmm. you know, I don't want it. I don't want that responsibility. Right. But when I'm responsible for everything, everything I experience, then I'm at choice. I can create whatever I want. When I'm putting it, you know, outside of my control, I, what am I going to do about it? So, you know, you mentioned um, forgiveness. I believe that I am the only person that I can forgive. Nobody Mm -hmm. else has done anything to me. Mm -hmm. If I'm in 100% responsibility Mm -hmm. and I allowed somebody to mistreat me, that's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I get to forgive myself for that and say, I did the best I could at that time. 
I thought I needed something from that person. I was wrong. It's okay. I'm still lovable. And, mm-hmm. and I want to just say this and plant a seed for everybody because one of my mentors said this to me and it took me a while to get it. And that is that we cannot change our worth. There's not a single thing we can do to be more worthy of love. And there's not a single thing we can do to be less worthy of love. Mm -hmm. We are just plain worthy of love. We were born that way. And that never, ever changes. Brilliant. Brilliant. And that is a perfect way to end our time together. And I'm so sad we have to end. Karen, thank you. Thank you so much for being our spotlight today. Oh my gosh. Nuggets, diamonds all over the place. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I love this. I could talk to you forever. (laughs) Absolutely. So we're going to have you back on Candid Conversation. (laughs) We're going to figure out what we're going to talk about because we're going to have some Candid Conversation. (laughs) Yes, let's do it. Audience, be sure to follow Karen on social media. Please tell them what's the best way to connect with you. My website is karenseltz.com, just my name.com. And I am on Facebook. I do most of my stuff on Facebook, Karen Seltz, and um, I just start doing reels. So this has been a fun journey. (laughs) Ooh, fun. Absolutely. Okay, good deal. So audience, you will also be able to connect with Karen and her last name is spelled S-E-L-T-Z. You'll be able to find her on all those mediums, but you'll be able to connect with her from the Define Your Path podcast platform as well. So we'll make sure you can find her. You need to follow her, reach out to her um, because she is the real deal. And this is real talk. This is true transparency and love. Thank you for helping us live up to our intention, Karen, today. Uh, Audience, be sure to visit our virtual home to see what we're up to at definingpast.online. And it's quite a bit. I'm Doc V, the pivot maestro and always your corner woman. Be true to you and define your path. We'll see you on our next episode.